Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know, I'm always looking for interesting topics to do on our show. I hope you find one. I Someday I might. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> but yesterday, I was opening up a, a can of split pea soup, which I love. Oh, me too. Yeah. Anderson's <laughs> is the best. No, it was Campbell's. Oh. It's my favorite, Campbell's. And I got to thinking, that has got to be one of the world's most famous brands. Immortalized in paintings and, you know. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. what are some of the world's most popular brands? We're going to tell you on this episode of Men Are So Smart. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And if you enjoy the show, we would love to have you give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe to our channel. It's very easy to do. And when you subscribe, uh, click the bell so that you'll get notifications. I was wondering what were some of the top brands, most popular brands in America. And so we did a little research and we found out coming in at number 10 is Clorox Bleach. Yeah always have it around the house for so many things. It made its debut back in 1913. Wow. Wow, I was right. That's So probably Jim, Big Jim Hall probably bought some of this. <laughs> it originally sold only bleach, <laughs> but has since acquired brands such as Formula 409, yes. Kitchen Bouquet, and Seasoning Sauce, and Hidden Valley Ranch Dressing. All right, so interesting fun fact. You ready for a fun fact? <laughs> Please. A $500 investment was all it took to found America's first commercial liquid bleach factory. Wow. It was called the Electro Alkaline Company. That was the company's name, but everyone kept referring to them by their most popular product's name, Clorox. So they renamed the company Clorox three years prior to the erection of the Hollywood sign in Los Angeles, a giant Clorox billboard greeted Bay Area ferry riders. I'll be damned. Who knew? Well, and there are there are a million brands of bleach. Oh yeah, but when you tell your wife that we're out of bleach, you say get Clorox. some Clorox. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Ronnie. Absolutely, and it's it's very much like uh, I we need some Kleenex. Right, Kleenex is a brand name, mm -hmm. but any facial tissue you just call Kleenex. Same thing with Jacuzzi. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right. This next one which you alluded to in the opening, Campbell's Soup mm, and Colgate. <laughs> yeah. Tied for ninth place is Campbell's Soup and Colgate, started in 1869 by fruit merchant Joseph Campbell and Icebox manufacturer um, Abraham Anderson. The Campbell's Soup Company products became a household staple and received national acclaim by 1911. Wow, even before um, Clorox. And we had a we had a big, gigantic Campbell's Soup uh, oh, yeah. Factory here. Right, because Sa Sacramento, California, it, you know, it's called Sacra Tomatoes it's, for a reason. Yes, we, we have a lot, a of, lot tomatoes. of tomatoes. Um, and so, and that closed, I don't know, maybe like eight or ten years ago. Yeah. And it was a big uh, a big hit. It was a blow. On the local economy. Uh, so, fun facts. Okay. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, the first Campbell Soup Company plant opened in Camden, New Jersey. Hey, that's where I'm from. Is it? Yeah, that's oh, right. Close. Well, it's pretty close. Uh, in 1897, Campbell, along with chemist John Dorrance, invented condensed soup. And the rest was history. As they say. And Campbell is the most popular brand in South Dakota. Hmm. And probably Minnesota, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, warm soup? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, according to Brand Footprint, the Colgate brand is purchased by more than half of the households in the world. Yeah, I bet. While it's best known for selling oral hygiene products, Colgate, now called Col uh, Colgate Palmolive, oh, yeah. also sells soaps, deodorants, pet food, mm, and household cleaners. Do you have any fun facts about either of those, Ronnie, that you uh, mentioned? Yes, or, Colgate and Company. Uh -huh. uh, it, it was called uh, in the 1890s. At, oh, sorry, Colgate and Company is as what it was called in the 1890s sold the first toothpaste in a tube. Wow. Uh, it was called Colgate's Ribbon Dental Cream. I like that. Uh, Colgate didn't start adding fluoride, an, a known cavity fighter, and enamel, enamel protectant to, to its toothpaste until 1968. Hmm. Uh, and now fluoride is a little bit controversial. Yeah, it's in the water. Uh, in 1890, Madison University in Hamilton, New York, 
changed its name to Colgate University in honor of the Colgate family. I always wondered that. They were longtime financial supporters of the institution. Wow. Kind of what I figured. Did not know that. Yes. That's amazing. All Next right. up and coming in at number eight. YouTube! Uh, Yay! YouTube! We love some YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the world's largest video sharing website, and it is no wonder. According to Mashable in 2011, more video content was uploaded to YouTube in a 60-day period than three major U.S. television networks created in 60 years. Hmm. Fun facts. Ready? Yes. Okay. YouTube began as a video dating site called TuneIn Hookup. <laughs> Didn't know. <laughs> That's the probably back in the day. Yeah, way back. Uh, the first YouTube video was a shot captured at the San Diego Zoo showing YouTube co-founder Jawed Kareem in front of the elephant enclosure talking about long trunks. It's an acronym or something. Mm, yeah. Uh, and then finally, the most popular to a show on YouTube is Men Are So Smart. I'll be damned. Who yeah. knew? I, I had, think they would have let us know. I had a feeling. Yeah. I had a feeling. But yeah. All right. Coming in number seven. It's that smart talker, Betty Crocker. <laughs> 1945, Fortune Magazine declared Betty Crocker <laughs> the second most popular woman in America after only Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay. Wow. I'll buy that. Uh, and as popular as her products were, they and still are now, Betty Crocker isn't actually a real person. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, what about Mrs. Butterworth? I don't know. Oh. Who can you trust? <laughs> yeah. No one. <laughs> She's the product of an ad campaign developed by a flour uh, milling company known as General Mills. Oh, well, I'm I think I've heard Mills. of them, maybe. Yeah. Uh, her last name came from the company's former director, William, William G. Crocker. Betty was chosen as her first name because they thought it sounded wholesome and cheerful. Betty. Betty. Yeah. Like Betty Rubble. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fun fact. Oh, I'm ready. Betty Crocker is the most popular brand in Maine, North Dakota, and Wisconsin. And to that, I say, what was fun about that? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. It was a little bit of a letdown. <laughs> yeah. Number six, Sony. Ooh. This electronics giant was founded in 46, 1946, kids with a capital of 190,000 yen and about 20 employees. Sony was originally called Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering Corporation, and its purpose was to establish an ideal factory that stresses the spirit of freedom and open-mindedness that will, through technology, contribute to Japanese culture, according to Sony's website. Fun fact, Sony's first consumer product was an electric rice cooker. Oh, who knew? Did they make a smaller one called the Rice Man? <laughs> you could carry portably. <laughs> yeah. Shh, I'm listening to my rice cook. <laughs> Tokyo, Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering Corporation was officially renamed Sony in January of 1958. The name was derived from the Latin sound, sound uh, oh, from the Latin sonus, which uh -oh. means sound. Right, there, there you go. go. All right, I got All it right. straight. All right. All right, next up, number five, Kellogg's. Oh, love me some Kellogg's. You know what? Frosted Flakes. Yeah. Uh, did you, you know, you used to get those little assortment packs. Oh, of, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could actually open the box up and pour milk. Pour milk right yeah. into it, yes. Yeah, that was but technology. The, the plain uh, corn flakes, those were always the last to get eaten. My mom would not buy a new package until, you ate them until we ate Son those a... plain cornflakes. Way to go, Mom. Oh, that was painful. Yeah. No, I, you know what? As long as you put enough sugar on those cornflakes. <laughs> That's true. They're good. You can make them frosted oh, flakes. Oh, sure you can. Uh, so Kellogg, the brand, uh -huh. is over 100 years old and still going strong. Uh, got its start in the U.S. is in 1898 and has since expanded to 118, I'm sorry, 180 countries worldwide. Canada was the first uh, country outside the United States that Kellogg's Corn Flakes was introduced, and that was back in 1914. Fun fact. Fun fact. Brothers W.K. Kellogg and Dr. John Harvey Kellogg invented cereal by accident. No. Wow, wouldn't that be a happy accident? Tell me how. Uh, according to the company's website, they accidentally flaked wheat berry 
WK kept experimenting until he flaked corn and created the delicious recipe for Kellogg's Corn Flakes. They're great! And they're, it's also <laughs> the most popular brand in Nebraska. Uh, nobody cares. North Platte specifically. <laughs> I have a buddy from North Platte. Most popular brands in the United States, number four, Amazon and UPS. Makes sense. Uh, do they go hand in hand? Yeah, kinda. Yeah, they kinda do. Uh, tied- I'm surprised they're not higher, honestly. I think Amazon owns the world now. Yeah, but to be tied at the end. Yeah. All right, tied for fourth place is Amazon and UPS, interestingly enough. Amazon almost didn't make this list. That's because the company, which got its start in 1994 as a bookseller, I remember that. came close to going bankrupt in the wake of the 2000 dot com crash. But thanks to the quick thinking of Warren Jensen, Amazon's former CFO, the company made some timely stock market deals that provided a comfortable cushion against a failing economy. And by 1999, Amazon was also selling consumer electronics, home improvement items, toys and games, and much more. Fun fact, Amazon is the most popular brand in Washington, the company's home state. Yeah. Now, UPS is the world's largest package delivery company, originally known as the American Messenger Company. Founder James Casey started the company with just a hundred bucks. Wow. Which he borrowed from a friend. <laughs> Good friend. <laughs> so hey, he started with hey, nothing. Ron, I got an idea. You got a hundred bucks? Sorry, no. I didn't think so. <laughs> which he borrowed from a friend. Yes, you do. <laughs> Casey and business partner Claude Ryan initially focused, I want the hundred bucks, focused on the package delivery for retail stores, but began delivering throughout Seattle for its largest client, the United States Post Office. In 1919, the company expanded beyond Saddleland to Oakland and took on the name United Parcel Service. Wow. And they also had a stock car in, uh, in NASCAR. That's right, Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what was it, 88, I think? Or, yes, it was. Yeah. What can Brown do wow, for you? that's going way back. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so next up, and this is number three, Pillsbury. Now... Pillsbury was founded in 1869 by Charles Pillsbury, who purchased a share in a Minneapolis flour mill. Mm -hmm. In 1872, the company was reorganized as the C.A. Pillsbury Company, and in 1889, it was sold to an English syndicate. It was owned by British company Grand Metropolitan PLC from 1889 to 2001. Wow, that's quite a run. Yeah. Uh, It was at that time that Pillsbury's rival... General Mills acquired most of Pillsbury, Pillsbury's assets, hmm. including the Pillsbury Doughboy. Yeah, are they, holding, are they holding him hostage? <laughs> Making him do stupid commercials. Little fun fact about Pillsbury. Oh, here we go. Most popular brand in Minnesota, uh, the state where it was founded in 1972. Pillsbury began uh, began purchasing Burger King restaurants, oh. and it evidently, um, excuse me, and eventually ended up owning. The entire chain. Holy cow. I think wow. I remember that. I do not remember that. That was big news. Next up, coming in at number two, Hershey's. I love this. Oh. I just had a Hershey. I, I, you know. I got the best damn chocolate. Oh, man. I just had a Hershey's with almonds. That's my favorite candy bar. I like a plain one. And, you know, um, I I bought it at lunchtime to have a little snack after my lunch. And as I was sitting there enjoying it, taking in a beautiful day, I thought to myself, Man, my grandson would love some of this. Oh, yeah, you would. So I just ate half of the bar, and I took it home, and I said to him, this is Hershey's with almonds. It's Grandpa's favorite candy bar. Here, you can have it. Oh, man, you should have seen the smile on his face. And he had chocolate all oh, over yeah. him, and yeah. it was worth every penny. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah. All right, fun fact. Uh, the very first Hershey's product, because I want to get to number one. The very first Hershey's product available to the public was Hershey's Cocoa. It was introduced in 1894. Hershey's Kisses were introduced in 1907. Also good. At that time, they were wrapped in foil by hand. Oh, dang. Can you believe that? Talk about tedious work, huh? Holy cow. Man. Yep. All right. All right. Number, Number one. one. Here we go. With a bullet. Google. Yeah. Although, God, how many times a day do you use it? I, I'm more like how many times an hour. <laughs> yeah. Every time. And it's it's kind of taken the fun out of rivalries now. True. At work, 
Yeah. You know, you who, saw them instantly, right? Who was who won the 1984 <laughs> Super Bowl? I don't know. Who was the who was the MVP that year? I don't know. We call it GTS, which is Google that stuff. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Whoops. <laughs> so, How come he can't say it, but I can? <laughs> GTS. So we're saying GTS all the time at work. Yeah. Uh, not only is Google America's most popular brand, uh -huh. it's also the world's most popular search engine. To be sure. Uh, got its start in 1995 at Stanford University when fellow students Larry Page and Sergey Brin built a search engine that used links to determine the importance of individual pages on the World Wide Web. Fascinating. According to Google's website, over the next few years, Google caught the attention of not only the academic community, but Silicon Valley investors as well. In August of 98, Sun co-founder Andy Bocheleim wrote Larry and Sergey a check for $100,000, and Google Inc. was officially born. For a hundred thousand. Oh, I'd love to have a piece of that. Oh, my. Uh, now, this is unbelievably crazy fun okay. fact. All right, the last one. It's got to be good. Google was initially called Backrub. Hmm, that's crazy. But you know what? I remember Ask Jeeves oh, was a search yeah, engine. I completely forgot about what that. What about Yahoo? Yahoo is still a search engine. Bing. But Bing, mm -hmm. all take back seats to Google. Yeah, Google is by far and away. But you know the, the one that is conspicuously absent from this. What about Apple? Oh yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, I guess what you're saying is you think that it probably would have cracked the top ten. But we don't thought. know what eleven and twelve and thirteen are. Right. I, it, it could be there. Yeah, but well, no, your point is well taken. And it's it's very it's a contemporary company. Most of these go back. Well, Google is probably the you know the newest kid on the block of all of these. A lot of them go back a hundred years. Yeah. So Apple was just something. I, you know, I really thought then. I really thought that uh, Amazon would have been much higher. I, yeah, me too. Um, but yep. uh, you know, I mean, I, everything I buy, I seem to buy from Amazon. Yeah. Online anyway. Yeah. And you know nothing. what, Ronnie? I don't know if I ever told you this, but I waited for the longest time before I ever bought anything online. And it was because I had had beaten into my head, well, you can't be shopping online because you're oh, subjecting yourself to hackers. And I, and so I thought, well, I don't want any part of that. That's right. the last thing I need. Right. So uh, I didn't ever use it. And then one day, one day I figured out, hey, I could buy that with my card and have it shipped right to my front door. Right. And I don't even have to go see people. <laughs> see? Huge bonus. There's the common denominator <laughs> right there. I don't like to go anywhere Big where there's people. Upside. Yeah, yeah. So Amazon is like the bomb for me. Yeah. It just. Well, at Christmas time now. You know, I, I just say, hey, just give me an Amazon card. Yeah, I'm that's a great that. gift. Amazon card and a Guitar Center card. Yeah, good sure. Go. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Absolutely, Ron. Uh, and, you know, that brings up a whole other topic of gift cards, which maybe we'll do on another uh, episode. But, okay, so there you have the top 10 brands in the United States. Yep. And they're they're all very good. And we think maybe the numbers might be slightly off. But that's not our survey. We're just right. bringing you the news. All right. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give it a like, thumbs up. Um, we appreciate each and every one. And, and also, please leave your comments below. If there's something that you think should be added to the list, something that we looked over or, or overlooked, I guess I should say, uh, add that, add your comments, and uh, subscribe to our channel. When you do, please click the bell. Yeah. You get notifications each time a new show comes out. And um, we would greatly appreciate that. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And this has been Men Are So Smart. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.